Hey everybody, stay tuned because today I want to talk to you about glutathione, the master antioxidant in the body and how you can get more of it to protect your health. Hey everybody and welcome to Motivational Monday where you can learn how simple shifts in your habits can lead to profound results in the way that you feel and in the way that you look. Today is a very important Motivational Monday because I'm going to be talking to you about glutathione, the master antioxidant. This is an essential antioxidant to have in your body to help grab hold of toxins in your system and move them out of your body through the bowels. It's very important that you have plenty of them. The good news is, is that your body manufactures glutathione with the use of three amino acids, cysteine, glycine, and glutamic acid. So you're constantly making some through the, through the use of these amino acids. However, with pollution, pollutants in our food and pesticides in our food, alcohol, medication, just the everyday toxicity of life, we're constantly depleting glutathione stores. And unless you actively participate in creating more, giving your body the ingredients it needs to make more glutathione, you can deplete the amount in your body over time, which can leave you in a weakened state and leave you more prone to having immune system problems like things with, such as things like cancer. So it's important that you have plenty of glutathione in your body and today I'm going to share with you how you can make that happen. So glutathione has been shown to help protect your lungs, your gastrointestinal tract, your nervous system, your liver, a whole host of functions in your body. And it's also been shown to help slow the process of aging and the problems that are come along with aging like things like heart disease, uh, weakened immune states that can lead to cancer. It also, like I said, is a powerful detoxifier of the liver and it helps protect you against dementia and other cognitive decline problems that happen with as we age. So again, it's really important to get adequate amounts. In addition to that, glutathione, having adequate amounts of it, helps to recycle certain antioxidants in your body like vitamin C, vitamin E, and selenium. So making sure you have healthy amounts of glutathione in and of itself is important, but in this way it works in concert with these other antioxidants to keep them more present in your body in an overall way helping to protect your immune system. So like I said, you're always making glutathione, but because of certain risk factors in your lifestyle and in your life and in your environment, you're probably also always depleting it. So for example, not only pollution and alcohol consumption and things like that, but did you know that Tylenol, one of the most commonly used over-the-counter medications, is a massive depleter of glutathione? In fact, what the antidote is for Tylenol toxicity when you overdose on Tylenol is that they give you something called cysteine and cysteine is one of the amino acids that converts to glutathione to help detoxify your liver. So it is the antidote for Tylenol toxicity. So it's necessary to keep your glutathione levels healthy and also lower your risk factors. So if you take lots of Tylenol, stop, switch over to something else or see if you can find a way to manage your pain by doing things like ginger, which is an anti-inflammatory. Clean up your diet. Don't eat things that have lots of pesticides. Do organic wherever you can. Also, don't eat junk food. That's another way that you deplete glutathione. Manage your uh, alcohol and drug intake, and in any way that you can, lower your risk factors so that you can, you're not depleting glutathione. At the same time, you want to include certain foods in your diet to help boost glutathione production, not only because these foods, some of these foods contain glutathione, but also because they're precursors. They give your body the ingredients that it needs to help make more glutathione. So the very best food that you can include are asparagus. So asparagus is a great source of glutathione, and I just juice this. I mean, I buy asparagus, organic asparagus, every single week. It's about $6 for a bunch of asparagus, which is a lot of money. But if you think about the benefit of it, People spend $6 a day on coffee, which is actively depleting nutrients in their body. $6 a week for a bunch of asparagus, which is going to not only give me something that I can juice with, but I can put it in my scrambled eggs, or I can put it in my soups. That's a really great way to get glutathione in a delicious way. Asparagus also happens to be really good for the kidneys. So including asparagus would be the number one vegetable to include in your diet to boost glutathione levels. Number two would be avocados. Avocados are also a decent source of, of glutathione, second only to asparagus. So you want to include them in your salads whenever you can. You can just, again, have them with some eggs in the morning. You can just slice them up and eat them on its own. But asparagus, I'm sorry, avocado is a really not, another wonderful way to get plenty of glutathione in your body. After that, you want to look at foods that are precursors to glutathione. They give your body the ingredients that they need to help create more glutathione. So a great example of that would be sulfur-containing vegetables like garlic, 
shallots, and onions. Those sulfur compounds give your body the ingredients that it needs to help generate the production of glutathione in your body. So slicing them up and putting them in your soups, or again, or putting them in your salads, um, putting them with your eggs just to give it flavor is another great way to get, to boost glutathione production in your system. Other glutathione precursors are cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and kale, and also walnuts, which is not a cruciferous vegetable, but walnuts is, also contains the ingredients that you need to help create more glutathione in your body. So having plenty of kale and broccoli in your diet would be great. What I like to do is I like to cut off the stalks of the broccoli and I juice them and then I cook the, the florets and I use that in my food. As far as the kale goes, again, I take the stems off and I juice that and then with the leaves, I always make kale pesto. And here's a great opportunity to synergize some of these ingredients to get the maximum potential of glutathione production that you can. You can take the leaves and you can, and you can use walnuts instead of pine nuts with some shallots and some, and some garlic and you can make that kale pesto that I have in the archives. It's delicious, it'll serve the purpose. You can toss it with um, brown rice pasta or just put it over some steamed vegetables and it's a great way to get lots of these ingredients in your body to help boost your production of glutathione. And then lastly, you can do turmeric, which is a great spice to help generate glutathione production as well. It has been known for its anti-inflammatory and cancer-fighting properties and it will work really well at generating more glutathione. To get the most of this, you might want to synergize it by using turmeric in the form of curry, in some curried vegetables, let's say, so with broccoli, and this way you get the benefit of having everything uh, combined in one dish to help to synergize those ingredients. So when I explain this stuff to my clients, they always ask me, isn't there just a pill I could take to help me get glutathione? Well, we'll get to that in a second, but before I mention that, I want to just share with you what I share with them. You eat food three times a day. So three times a day, you have an opportunity to eat something that's going to really be life enhancing or something that's going to be depleting. And the choice is really yours, right? So if you want to boost your glutathione production, the very best way is to clean out the junk food that's going to actively deplete the glutathione, whether you supplement it or not in a pill form, and then inclu include these foods as best you can in your diet on a regular basis to constantly replenish the amount of glutathione that's being created in your system. So use food as your first line of defense. Once you've done that, if you feel like you're uh, at risk, that you're exposed to a tremendous amount of toxins for various reasons, it could be from work-related uh, issues, pollution because you live in a polluted city, whatever it is, then you can talk to your doctor about taking a supplement that could boost glutathione production. So there are pills out there that are called glutathione, but that is poorly absorbed by the body. Your body does not absorb glutathione in and of itself in that form. So taking those pills are worthless. What you would need instead, and again, you would need your doctor's approval, is to take N-acetylcysteine. So cysteine is one of the three amino acids that you need to create glutathione, and it's the rate-limiting step of, that, of creating glutathione. Without enough cysteine, the reaction doesn't go, and you don't make enough of the end product. So N-acetylcysteine, N-A-C, would be the supplement that you would use if you feel like you need, an, in addition to a healthy diet, you need an extra boost in your glutathione production. So you can talk to your doctor about that. So like everything, you really just want to eat well, you want to minimize your downside by limiting the amount of exposure you have uh, to toxins in your body through the things that you expose yourself to. Exercise is super important as well, so make sure you exercise, sleep well, all those things. Everything works together to create a healthy system. Eating these foods is great, but you really got to look at all of it and try to manage all of it as best you can. Start with one habit and then go from there. If you're not familiar with some of these foods, start including them on a regular basis. If you're not sure about how to use kale, I'm telling you, check out the kale pesto. You will not be disappointed. It is so good. And I recently made it with walnuts rather than pine nuts, and it was awesome. So you can make that, keep it in the freezer, and then just defrost it and have it with brown rice pasta, like I said, or some steamed vegetables, and you got yourself a really nice glutathione-producing dish. So now I want to hear from you. Are you familiar with glutathione, or is this the first time you heard of it? What are your thoughts on what I just shared? Or are you familiar with it and have you found a way to include these foods in your diet in a way to maximize the glutathione production? I would love to hear your feedback or any comments you might have. If you're watching on YouTube, you can click on the link below and it'll bring you to the blog and you can comment there. As always, I welcome your feedback and I love to hear what you have to say. 
If you like tips like this and you're looking for more of them, then come, over, come on over to barbaramendeznutrition.com and you can sign up for the mailing list there. Once you do, I will automatically send to you an email every Monday with either a written or a video blog with a recipe or some suggestion or inspirational tip to help move you along towards your health goals. You can follow me on Facebook or Twitter and as always, share the videos if you think that your friends would benefit. I would love to have you do that. Thanks so much. Eat these foods, get healthy, and I look forward to seeing you next Monday.